Hello everyone, let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. In this problem, we are given an array and we have to find the maximum possible sum for a circular subarray. Let's understand what it means with the help of an example. So in this array, we are considering two portions, one from the start and one from the end. So this can be considered as a circular subarray. And the sum of it will be the sum of these two individual subarrays. We could also choose non-circular subarrays. And for this example, this would be the maximum sum that we can get. In our second example, when we take the first and the last numbers, they would make a circular subarray and its sum would be 10, which is the maximum. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's try to understand which parts of an array can be the maximum subarray. One scenario is that our maximum subarray can be in the middle of this array. For this problem, I've already uploaded a solution today. And I will highly recommend you to check that out by clicking on the top right corner. For a second scenario, a maximum subarray can be a circular subarray. So this subarray would have these two parts and there will also be a remaining portion of this array. Together these three parts will be equal to the total of this array. We can also write this equation as to maximize our answer we have to maximize the left part of this equation. Since the total of this array is a fixed part and it cannot be changed, we have to subtract as less a number as possible to maximize our left part. This is only possible if we minimize this variable of this equation. Hence to get the maximum answer we have to minimize the remaining part of this array. So in a way we have to find the minimum subarray in this array. The solution will be very similar to finding the maximum subarray. So our answer can either be the maximum subarray from the middle part or the answer can be derived by subtracting the minimum subarray from the total of this array. And whichever is the maximum of these two will be the answer. The time complexity of this would be O of n because we only have to go through the array once and the space complexity would be constant. Let's implement our solution. To solve this problem we'll need three things. The total of this array, the maximum subarray and the minimum subarray. So we'll need two extra variables to track the current maximum and the current minimum. We'll initialize the current maximum and the maximum sum to be minus infinity. And we'll initialize the current minimum and the minimum sum to be plus infinity. And the total sum will be initialized to zero. Now we'll go through all the elements in this array. For storing our current maximum, we'll consider two scenarios. In the first scenario, we'll just consider our current number individually. And in our second scenario, we'll take the sum of our current maximum and the current number. Our current maximum will be the maximum of these two. Now we'll update the maximum sum of this array. We'll take the maximum of this with the current sum. Now we'll do the same thing to find the current minimum for this number. We'll also initialize the minimum subarray sum by taking the minimum of it with the current minimum. At the end, we'll add this number to the total of this array. And finally, our answer can be the maximum of the maximum subarray sum and the minimum subarray sum subtracted from the total. Now there is one scenario that we have to handle when our array contains only negative numbers. Since all the numbers are negative, when we consider the whole array, it would result in the minimum subarray sum. This would also be equal to the total of this array, so this difference would be zero. And when we consider the maximum subarray sum, it would be equal to the maximum of this array. So when we take the maximum of these two, our answer would be zero. This would mean that we have considered an empty subarray. And as per the problem statement, we should return the maximum of this array. It would be stored in the maximum sum and we could return that. So we'll only return this as the answer when the maximum subarray sum is greater than zero. And in the case of just negative numbers, we'll return the maximum of this array, which would be stored in the maximum subarray sum. We are now done with our solution. If you have any doubts, concerns or feedback regarding this solution, please mention in the comments. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching.